You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the gun! Hey yo, Reliving the War episode 163, December 7th, 1998. Tonight Raw comes from New Haven, Connecticut, while WCW Nitro comes from the Houston Astrodome in Texas. I'm getting back into the swing of things with this episode. Last week's Reliving the War was put together before my break, so I'm having to remind myself of all the feuds and rivalries going on right now on Raw and Nitro, but it's good to be back and I'm excited for more Monday Night War nonsense. While I was gone, Jam Up Guy Francisco represented RTW with his jam shirt while attending SummerSlam in Detroit. A big thanks to Francisco and everyone else who picked up a shirt over at chinlocks.com. Right, let's see if I remember how to do this as we check out some of the final shows of 1998. Mike Tenay's got a big scoop over on Nitro. Goldberg's demanded a match against Bam Bam Bigelow. Goldberg's not allowed to defend his belt until Starcade, but tonight in the Astrodome, Bam Bam gets a non-title match against Billy Boy. NWO Black and White leader Scotty Steiner comes to the ring to cut a promo, and the commentators say that Scott attacked Wildcat Willie before Nitro came on the air. It's insane that I haven't mentioned Wildcat Willie yet on Reliving the War, but Larry Sabisco calls this attack completely unforgivable. Like, Calm your tits, Larry. It's only Wildcat Willie. Two things come out of Texas. Steers and queers. All right, Scott, geez. Scott tells the women in the audience that Big Papa pumps their hookup before saying the fans need to give Halloween Hogan a standing ovation. I want you to get a standing ovation to Halloween Hogan. Wood from the hood, Halloween Hulk Hogan. Stanner says he and Hogan are like brothers. Hulk Hogan knew Scott was the only man who could fill his shoes. Big Papa Pump has the largest arms in the world and Scott can get the job done. He proved that by putting Scott Hall in the recliner last week on Thunder. Stanner wants another match against Scott Hall tonight on Nitro and Stanner says tonight will be Hall's last night in pro wrestling. Diamond Dallas Page had a match next against Kendall Wyndham. Old Kendall wasn't too sure what to do when DDP went for a rebound diamond cutter, but he got there in the end. Page now has his sights set on the giant for costing him the US title. DDP vs The Big Man happens at Starcade 98. The new, more confident Norman Smiley then took on Prince Ikea, and what do you know, Norman Smiley won the match. He tried to apply his Norman Conquest chicken wing and it just didn't look right, did it? Anyway, it's good to see Norman win matches, and it's also good seeing Prince Ikea lose matches. Fantastic stuff. On Thunder, it was announced that Rey Mysterio would face Juventud Guerrero with the winner going on to face the Cruiserweight champ at Starcade. Eddie Guerrero came out on Nitro to call Rey a selfish little turd because Rey signed the match contract behind Eddie's back. Eddie says Mysterio's gonna get disciplined tonight, and that discipline comes in the form of one Silver King. It's clear by the look in Silver King's eyes that the LWO knew where to get the good stuff backstage, know what I'm saying? This boy's completely whopped out. Silver King vs Mysterio then takes place in the middle of the ring and things got a little botchy, just a little. Thankfully the guys made up for it though and Ray ended up beating the king of all things silver with a top rope bulldog. Backstage Goldberg bumped into Kevin Nash and Nash is pretty annoyed that Goldberg apparently can sign his own matches now that he's facing Bam Bam Bigelow tonight. The Red Rooster, who must be the new JJ Dillon, says tonight's main event is a one-off but Nash says the match isn't gonna happen. Goldberg responds by saying he dreams every night of driving Nash's ass into the mat. Uh, that, that sounds erotic. You know, I don't know why Kevin cares about Bigelow vs Goldberg. If anything, he'd want that match to happen so Goldberg gets messed up, but what do I know? 
The Renegade marches to the ring for his final match ever against Wrath and the match ended in 3.5 minutes or so. Wrath won with the meltdown. Renegade, real name Richard Wilson, would not get his WCW contract renewed and reportedly he went into a deep depression following his release. He died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head in February 1999. Raw opens up with a video recap of last week and through this video we find out that The Rock and The Undertaker are going to team up tonight to face Steve Austin and Mankind. Michael Cole's on commentary duties as Jim Ross suffered his second Bell's palsy attack during the UK Capital Carnage show. Ross did attend Raw and he did originally commentate, however his commentary was dubbed over in post-production. Triple H is going to cut a promo to kick off Raw while Disco Inferno and Chavo Guerrero team up to face Stevie Ray and Horace Hogan. Hunter wants to get right down to business and he wants the Outlaws to come out of the ring. Triple H says it's fine if the Outlaws have joined Vince McMahon, but they should at least have the balls to come out and say it to Hunter's face. The Outlaws come out, they're wearing suits. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Shut up. Road Dog says it's Vince McMahon who now presents the new corporate outlaws. That's right, Road Dog Esquire and Badass Inc. are now corporate and Triple H doesn't look too happy about it. Road Dog then introduces the commissioner. HBK makes his way down the ringside and we get some little corporate high fives before the three men step inside the ropes. And here we go, a face to face confrontation between Sean and Hunter. HBK says that he's the founding father of D-Generation X and Hunter owes HBK an apology for gimmick infringement. Hunter says he owes Sean nothing, but HBK begs to differ. Sean says he turned Hunter into a somebody when he was absolutely nobody, but Hunter remembers things a little differently. According to Triple H, Hunter carried Sean while HBK had that WWF title, and that was a title that Sean had no business holding anymore. Hunter picked up the ball when Sean bailed after WrestleMania so Hunter owes Sean absolutely nothing. Sean says he made Triple H and he can break him too, and Hunter breaks it down by telling his old friend to suck it. Seeing as Sean's the commissioner, he decides to book a match. Hunter and X-Pac vs. <laughs> Hunter and X-Pac vs. Bossman in Shamrock. Triple H doesn't seem too bothered about this, so Sean makes it an ODQ match and if the Outlaws want to get involved, then so be it. HBK then tells the production guys to hit his music, the DX theme plays in the arena and the corporation have a little fun at DX's expense before heading back up the ramp. Vince, Shane and the Stooges greet the Outlaws and Sean on the stage and there you have it, the Outlaws have joined the corporation and this means DX is a trio once again. Before the Nitro match gets started, we get to hear Disco speak. If it's as good as his dancing, then we're in for a treat. Disco makes reference to Thunder where he said he had a blockbuster announcement, and he invites Conan to come out of the stage. K-Dog, much like the rest of us, has no idea what Disco's talking about, and he looks even more confused when Disco announces that he's the newest member of the Wolfpack. Disco really likes to jump on things that are past their best, it would seem. But for now, he's got to work this tag match with Chavo against two members of, I guess, his new rivals, the NWO Black and White. Horace takes the early advantage as he pounds away on Chavo in the corner before throwing Guerrero to the mat from the opposite corner. The horseman's able. Uh, fair enough, that wasn't brilliant. But Guerrero's able to fight back with a dropkick and a springboard bulldog before making the tag to Disco. Disco immediately loses the advantage and he gets pummeled in the NWO corner. Disco does fight back with a swinging neckbreaker and an elbow from Brad Tarot, but he's unable to put his opponent away. Stevie, meanwhile, doesn't take too kindly to all this as he tosses Disco to the outside where Horace is able to attack with his NWO weight belt. Horace hits a backbreaker inside the ring, but he misses a splash which allows Disco to make the tag. Chavo fires up with drop kicks and forearms and he even scores with his Tornado DDT, but Stevie breaks up the pinfall attempt. The referee then gets distracted by trying to get Chavo to leave the ring after Disco tagged in, and this distraction allows the NWO lads to hit a spike pile driver for the win. As odd as this match was in terms of participants, it was nice to see Chavo get a bit of a shine here and he was definitely the fan favourite throughout the bout. Has Disco Inferno really joined the wolf pack though? He did say that Kevin Nash okayed it, but I'm sure we'll find out more information soon enough.
Jeff Jarrett takes on D'Lo next on Raw, on Nitro Nash cuts a promo and we've got Saturn vs Glacier. This Sunday at Rock Bottom, Jarrett's gonna face Goldust. If Goldust loses, he's gonna strip in the middle of the ring. If Jarrett loses, then Deborah has to show the puppies. Exciting times. Jarrett attacks early, but D'Lo comes back with a clothesline and a flying clothesline. Deborah then tries to distract the referee, but the plan backfires and Big Mark Henry is able to lend D'Lo a hand on the outside. Back in the ring, Jarrett gets his chest lit up, but Jarrett fires back with an arm breaker before Michael Cole announces on commentary that JR isn't here tonight because of the passing of his mother. The WWF really should have been more careful with the video edit in that case because, as mentioned earlier, Jim Ross can be clearly seen sitting at the commentary table. To confirm, Ross's mother passed away on the 7th, the day of this episode of Raw, so with the death of his mother and the Bell's palsy attack the day before, it was a very bad few days for Jim Ross. Jarrett delivers a flying crossbody, his Russian leg sweep only gets a 2 and again Deborah distracts the referee. This time it's a bit more successful as Jarrett's able to hit a low blow. Still, Delo's able to come back with his running power bomb, and Jarrett gets folded in half. Goldust then shows up wearing a trench coat and we all know what that means. Deborah looks a little more disappointed than shocked while looking at Goldust's little bizarre one but this distraction via dick allows Delo to score a pinfall win. Jared and Deborah are just kinda like, why did he do that as Goldust heads back up the ramp. Over on Nitro, Kevin Nash looks pretty fed up before cutting his promo. He says Goldberg doesn't run the show and the only match Goldberg's gonna have is against Big Sexy. So tonight Big Sexy's gonna put on his gear and he says Bam Bam and Goldberg won't get in the ring without Kevin Nash being in there too. It's gonna be a three way dance. I still fail to see why Kev would care about Bam Bam vs Goldberg but there you go. Apparently we've got a triple threat match in the main event tonight. Glacier and Saturn then had another match. Remember before Glacier got injured he was talking about having the best super kick in the business and how Saturn stole the move from Chili Chode? Yeah, it seems like he doesn't care about all that nonsense anymore. Ernest Miller shows up and he says he's got a bad ankle so Perry Saturn's getting off lightly tonight. Glacier's able to hit Saturn with that cryonic kick while Perry was distracted and Miller makes his way down to the ring as Glacier continues to take advantage. Frosty Balls hits a big boot followed by a tilt award slam. Glacier looks very pleased with himself as the destruction of Saturn continues and when Perry gets a chance to pin his opponent, Glacier fires back with a clothesline. Glacier then pulls off an absolutely shit rolling leg drop, I mean look at that, that's so shit. And this allows Perry to hit an inverted atomic drop followed by a springboard forearm. Saturn then delivers a big elbow and the match ends with Sonny Ono and Ernie Miller causing a distraction. Unfortunately for Glacier, the plan backfires though and Sub-Zero takes a kick. The referee ends up calling for the bell when he notices Miller in the ring. Because Saturn wouldn't stop attacking after the bell, the referee awards the match to Glacier, so Scott Dickinson takes a Death Valley Driver and the crowd goes nuts. Still, a rare victory for Glacier on Nitro, he's moving up in the world it seems. <laughs> Next we have Lex Luger vs uh, Emery Hale. On Raw, the Headbangers take on Gangrel and Edge. The Brood pulled off that sweet double DDT again in this match but the Headbangers got the advantage when Edge went tumbling out of the ring. Mosh and Thrasher showed off their skills with a few double team moves of their own but the match comes to an abrupt end after Edge gets hit with a flapjack. Luna Vachon runs down to attack Mosh and Thrasher and the referee calls for the bell. For some reason, Tiger Ali Singh and Babu run down too, so the Brood get out of harm's way as the oddities attack the Headbangers, Tiger and his servant. Even the commentators say they have no idea what's going on and they seem puzzled as to why Tiger showed up. The Brood definitely need better opponents or a bit more story to dig their fangs into. Thankfully though, this does change very soon. Emery Hale vs Lex Luger then. Apparently Jimmy Hart was big on Mr Hale and it's been said that he was being groomed as a possible future opponent for Hulk Hogan. Sounds ridiculous I know, seeing as there's already a stacked roster in WCW but that's the story that's out there. He's a big boy, that's for sure and somebody must have went to bat for him seeing as he's wrestling on Monday Night but he is up against Lex Luger, Lex Luger with a goatee, so he has no chance at all. In saying that, Emery still gets his stuff in, he pulls off a second rope leg drop and he stops a Lex Luger comeback which doesn't happen too often in WCW, but a missed top rope splash lets Lex go through his clothesline routine before hitting Hale with the bionic elbow followed by the torture rack. 
The match was nothing special, and I don't think introducing new green guys on Nitro during the run up to Starcade's the best idea either. Check this out though, I found this way more interesting. The PC version of the Nitro video game gets advertised and it has a sweet holographic cover, probably the only good thing about this game. I need to play this again and do a new updated video on it, maybe I'll try this PC version. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello, Smokey, my cat. Goldust vs. Owen Hearts next up on Raw. On Nitro, Bobby Duncan Jr. vs. Chris Jericho. Again. Chris Jericho's magnificent hairs matched only by his even more magnificent tights as he makes his way to the ring. Although everything pales in comparison to the magnificent Ralphus, I think we'd all agree. Jericho gets on the mic to once again say that he hates cowboys, meaning the Jericho-holics in the arena tonight also hate cowboys, thus making Jericho the true hometown hero tonight. So these two are going to go at it once again, but this time without the world TV title being at stake. The two men exchange blows at the opening bell, but it's Big Bobby that gets the better of things as he drops Jericho with a shoulder tackle. Jericho goes up and over to escape a hip toss, but he gets leveled with a clothesline. Chris is then able to create some separation with a back suplex. Jericho scores with a body slam and he then heads up top, but Bobby's able to push Chris off and he takes a tumble to the floor. While Jericho is getting his bearings on the outside, Bobby leaps over the top rope and the Ayatollah gets wiped out. Some impressive athleticism from the big man. Bobby does get hung up on the top rope though and Jericho connects with a missile dropkick before strutting his way into a pin attempt. The big Texan doesn't take too kindly to this lack of respect, so he kicks Jericho in the face with a big boot before following that up with a bulldog. He then hits his Vader bomb elbow for another near fall. Bobby then decides to head up top, but Jericho cuts him off by hitting the ropes and Bobby gets crotched. Jericho is able to take advantage with a superplex, but Bobby's able to fight back with the knee to the midsection. Bobby then looks for a power bomb, but Chris counters into a roll up and he's able to get the win with his feet on the ropes. I'd say this one was on par with, if not slightly better than their World War 3 match, but hopefully both guys can now move on to other things, this one seemingly going nowhere. Over on Raw, Vince McMahon wants reassurance from Paul Bear that The Undertaker can play ball tonight and he won't cause any issues when teaming up with the corporate chomp. Paul says it's all good and McMahon has nothing to worry about. So, Owen Hart's came out of retirement because he wants to fight Steve Blackman at rock bottom. It's as good a reason as any, I guess. Tonight though, he's facing trench coat flasher Goldust and seeing as Goldust interfered in Double J's business, you just know there's gonna be some interference here. Owen's a little rusty, it seems as he reminds fans at ringside that he was retired. He needs to find his groove again. Goldust gets the better of Owen in the early going, but a spinning wheel kick puts Goldust down and Owen then goes to work on his opponent in the corner. Hart then pulls off a gut wrench suplex followed by a body slam as Michael Cole says Owen looks too good here and it doesn't look like he has any ring rust. Cole obviously thinks that Owen's the blue blazer. We see an insecurity from Owen and Goldust replies with a few chops. The bizarre one then misses a corner charge and this allows Owen to hit a neckbreaker followed by an elbow drop from the second rope. As Goldust makes his comeback, we see Jeff Jarrett and Deborah making their way down to the ring and check it out, Deborah has a trench coat on. Deborah opens up and for some reason it's Owen who gets distracted. He tells Deborah and Jeff to go away and Goldust ends up winning via pinfall. So that's two matches that have ended thanks to people flashing. It's the other Attitude era, ladies and gents. The Acolytes have their first Raw match next when they take on Val Venus and the Godfather. On Nitro, Scott Putsky takes on the Giant. The Giant mocks DDP on his way to the ring and man, he's definitely looking tired and maybe a little checked out. The big man misses a punch, but he doesn't miss the choke slam. From bell to bell, the match went for 30 seconds and the Giant's post-match promo lasts longer than the in-ring action. Giant rips into the people of Houston and seeing as DDP's the people's champ, then these fans must think DDP's just like Santa Claus. Well, this year, the Giants, the Grinch, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he said. And the big man says that DDP vs the Giant at Starcade 98 is gonna be a real easy payday. DDP likes to say bang a lot. Bang! 
but according to the giant, DDP has never witnessed a real bang. Again, this is getting slightly erotic. Jan says he's got a special present for Paige at Starcade. It's a choke slam, so DDP better watch out because a big old stinky Jan's coming after him at the pay per view. Over on Raw, the pre match promo is actually longer than the match. This time we've got Val Venus and the Godfather wanting to give a hoe away to someone in the audience. Tis the season after all, and Godfather's feeling extra generous. Our guy right here is clearly ready for it, but the Godfather thinks this dude here needs some love tonight. He gets in the ring, he says his name's Bob, and Godfather says Bob can have both creatures tonight seeing as he's such a hot stud. Bob's absolutely delighted at this turn of events, but maybe the Acolytes wanted to get some sticky fingers tonight because they march down to the ring afterwards and they go on offense right away. Bradshaw in particular looks pissed off. I was looking forward to this one, but unfortunately it ends abruptly when the match goes to the outside and the referee loses control. It's a double DQ and honestly the brawling wasn't that bad. It didn't feel like it warranted such a hasty decision from the referee, but anyway, the jackal Don Callis watches on as referees run down to break things up. A loud pop can then be heard when Steve Austin seen walking backstage and the rattlesnake's on his way to the ring to cut a promo. We've got that Steve Austin promo next on Raw while Raven and Canyon are scheduled to take on Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. Unfortunately, again, we have another tag team match that doesn't actually take place. Raven's still refusing to wrestle, so Canyon decides he's not going to get caught up in another two on one situation. Actually, make that three on one, seeing as Arn Anderson's also at ringside. Canyon says last week he was the loser who broke the Armstrong curse and he's not about to get beaten up by the horseman. Chris says this is a two and a half on one deal right here if we include Arn Anderson. And Canyon calls Arn an old man as he tries to leave the ringside area. But that mad bastard Double A's brought a crowbar with him and Canyon's quick to get out of harm's way. The enforcer just seems to carry random weapons at all times. Malenko and Benoit get in a few free shots before Anderson gets in the ring with his trusty crowbar. Again, Canyon has to run away from Anderson and the crowd aren't too amused that this match didn't take place. There's no reaction at all, so it's a miss right here from WCW. On Raw, Steve Austin says he's managed to scrape by every time Vince McMahon throws something at him, but the odds are maybe stacked against Stone Cold when he faces The Undertaker in a Buried Alive match this week at Rock Bottom. The Undertaker's already tried to bury Austin and he tried to embalm Austin, but Stone Cold reminds fans that these attempts all failed. At Rock Bottom, the Ministry of Stone Cold will show no mercy and Austin's going into the pay-per-view with no fear, and it's at this moment when the lights go out and Taker's music plays in the arena. The Undertaker the Undertaker's symbol can be seen at the entranceway, and the Undertaker's voice can be heard as the Phenom sends a message to Austin. Undertaker says he and Stone Cold travelled down the highway to hell not too long ago, and two things are apparent. One, Austin's helpless against the Ministry, and two, the Undertaker can take Austin's soul anytime he wishes. Tonight, Austin's journey stops in Purgatory, where Stone Cold will remain until Rock Bottom, and the Undertaker's gonna sacrifice Austin to the Ministry of Darkness. At Rock Bottom, Austin will be buried alive and Undertaker will make sure that Austin burns in hell. The symbol then gets set on fire as Taker's music gets turned up in the arena. A great and memorable moment here on Raw's War, but remember, Stone Cold and The Undertaker will meet later in that tag team main event. We've got a Ric Flair promo next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Steve Blackman vs Tiger Ali Singh. I don't know what Tiger did to deserve such punishment on Monday Night Raw. Perhaps he's using his wealth to create a new robot monster, or he committed the cardinal sin of professing his love for country music, but whatever it is, he's gonna have to atone for those sins right now. If he thinks that attacking Blackman from behind with a flag will give him the upper hand, he's sadly mistaken. Steve politely lets Tiger get some shots in, but his charitable mood soon runs out as he connects with several kicks before clotheslining Tiger over the top rope. Back inside, 
died, Blackman hits a spinebuster before going to work in the corner. Steve keeps the advantage with a snap suplex and a body slam before he drops Tiger once again. This time it's with the Blackman torpedo, you love to see it. Blackman decides to take pity on Tiger and he ends the punishment with the Mervug kick pretty early on. Looks like Sensei Blackman feels Tiger's now paid for his crimes. This one was essentially a squash match, but when Steve Blackman's involved, there's no one that stands a chance anyway. After the match, the Blue Blazer makes his way down to the ring, making sure to fall on his ass on his way down the ramp, and Blackman attacks the masked man, believing it to be Owen Hart. Alas, Tom Foolery's a food as Owen attacks Blackman from behind, which in turn convinces Jerry Lawler that Owen Hart and the Blue Blazer are indeed two different people. Owen locks in the Dragon Sleeper on Blackman while screaming at him that it's Steve's fault that Owen had to come out of retirement. These two are going to lock horns at rock bottom and we'll then see who the real lethal weapon is this Sunday on pay per view. Backstage, Mick Foley's been looking around for Steve Austin. He has a garbage bag and the commentators wonder what could be inside. Mankind enters Stone Cold's dressing room just before Raw takes a commercial break. Nature Boy Ric Flair and Steve McMichael join the horsemen in the ring and Mean Gene reminds Rick that he's got his match against Bischoff coming up at Starcade. Flair tells Eric to get off his girlfriend and listen to the Nature Boy, because Bischoff's dictatorship is about to come to an end. Flair says Bischoff hates history, he brings up Houston Wrestling and Paul Bosch which gets a great pop from the audience. Flair then mentions the Funks, the Briscoes, Harley Race and others before saying these men bled in the ring so that Jack off Eric can have the job he has today. Rick says at Starcade he's gonna choke Eric, he's gonna gouge his eyes, he's gonna chop Eric, the blood will run out of Bischoff's nostrils as his neck gets squeezed, the Nature Boy's getting all fired up and it's absolutely glorious. Rick says Starcade will be Eric's funeral and the horsemen are gonna take back wrestling while stripping Eric of everything he has. A great flair promo here if you enjoy the more unhinged side of the Nature Boy. Conan vs Booker T on Nitro and we've got Mark Henry vs Draws on Raw. The new TV champs all fired up as he puts that newly won gold on the line against the man who technically never lost the belt in Booker T. Some crisp back and forth from both men leads to Booker connecting with a spin kick followed by a flying forearm. Conan counters a back body drop attempt and he's able to hit his signature rolling lariat before a low drop kick sends Booker out to the floor. Booker then gets sent into the guardrail before Conan applies a version of a cross face inside the ring but Jesus Christ you could drive a bus through that gap there big lad. Booker fights out momentarily but falls victim to a float over bulldog from the TV champ. And that's more like it K-Dog, a good tight chin lock. Mustn't have been tight enough though as Booker's able to get to his feet and he's able to score with his axe kick. That's the cue for big brother Stevie Ray to make an appearance at ringside. Booker's then able to connect with a Hardham sidekick to Conan. Booker heads up top. Presumably he wants to end it with his missile drop kick but Stevie Ray comes in and he clobbers Conan with the slapjack, forcing the referee to call for the bell and the disqualification. Booker's furious with his brother and it looks like he's about to hit Stevie, but he can't bring himself to do it. So Stevie tells Booker that he needs to join him in the NWO before heading back up the ramp. This was an enjoyable TV match, but once again DQs proved to be one of the most infuriating things about Monday Night Wrestling during this era. Universe modes in full swing tonight with this next match on Raw, but the two are being featured in prominent storylines at the moment, so getting them both on TV isn't a bad thing, I suppose. Cole and King bring up the Hawk incident from a few weeks ago, debating whether or not it was an accident or if Hawk was indeed pushed. Big Mark drops straws with a big clothesline to start us off before laying in some hard forearms to the chest. Mark gets a little overzealous though and he ends up on the outside. Draws avoids the big man when he comes charging in. Draws lays in the boots. Mark gets his head banged off the barricade and the ring apron. Draws then goes back to his football days and he hits a big shoulder tackle that takes Mark down. Big Mark then gets thrown into the ring steps and it looks like he's in real trouble, that is, until China shows up on the ramp. She stands at ringside as Draws connects with a spinning back elbow and another shoulder tackle. Animal distracts the referee as Draws holds Mark up and he tells China to hit the big man, but she refuses and instead she punches Draws right in the mouth. This allows Mark to hit a par slam and a splash and Mark wins via pinfall. China walks back up the ramp and Mark and Delo celebrate, but it seems that Mark's a bit more preoccupied with the fact that the ninth wonder of the world came out to lend him a hand. Look at him, he's absolutely buzzing.
we have Scott Hall versus Scott Steiner next on Nitro, while over on Raw, X-Pac and Triple H take on Ken Shamrock and the Big Boss Man. Scott Hall still has no entrance music, he doesn't belong to any faction, he doesn't belong to WCW, so he's still a lone wolf. Hall says Scott Steiner won't put him out of wrestling like he said he would earlier and the bad guy is also too stupid to quit, so Steiner should come down to the ring and take his best shot. Steiner makes his entrance and it looks like he's missing Slick Johnson. Steiner thinks Hall's taken out the bogus referee and Steiner was right. Mickey J pushes Johnson down to the floor and Mickey's gonna officiate this matchup. Scott Steiner takes a choke slam in the middle of the ring but he kicks out at two. Hall pulls off his fall away slam but Steiner gets up and Hall takes a clothesline. The competitors had the crowd in the palm of their hands right here and it's a real shame that NW interference ends the match very early on. Black and white members attack Scott Hall and uh, all you can do is shake your head. This could have been good and the audience were really pumped up for it but it's the same story as always. Lex Luger and Conan run down to help Hall but the numbers are too much. The Jan comes out to help out his teammates as Hall takes the recliner but then Diamond Dallas Page comes down and he's able to take out the big man. This leads to NWO Hollywood escape in the ring and yeah, I hated this so much. Switching over to Raw, Triple H makes his in-ring return tonight in this tag team match. Bossman looks to take full advantage of the no DQ stipulation as he squares off with X-Pac while holding his nightstick. He decides to throw it away though, figuring that he can take out X-Pac without using any weapons. I mean, he seems to have a point as he connects with a big knee to the midsection that drops Pac before delivering a choke toss. He does miss his follow-up clothesline though, which allows Pac to connect with a spin kick before making the tag to Triple H. Trips lays into Bossman as the fight goes to the outside, where the leader of DX throws the hardcore champion into the ring steps. X-Pac gets in a few shots before Shamrock joins the fray and all four men brawl on the outside. The corporation get the better of things as X-Pac gets sent into the ring post while Triple H gets body slammed on the ramp. Bossman picks up the steps and he charges at X-Pac but the kid's able to move out of the way and the bossman runs into the ring post. Meanwhile Triple H hits Kenny Boy on the ramp and back in the ring DX are able to double team Shamrock culminating in a bronco buster from X-Pac. Bossman makes his way back in and he hits Pac with a back fist before delivering a spine buster. Pac then gets dropped over the top rope getting his arm caught in between the ropes in the process and this allows Bossman to get in a few free shots before locking in a... a no, no that's not a proper chin lock. Who, who does he think he's fooling here? Sort that shit out, Bubba. The corporation are so annoyed by this lack of proper chin foo that they're forced to make their way down to the ring. Pac's able to fight out before immediately getting dropped with a big boot to the face, and Kid continues to suffer at the hands of the corporation as Shamrock connects with a jumping leg lariat and a hard clothesline. He is able to fire back with a clothesline of his own though and he connects with an enziguri, allowing Sean to make the tag to Triple H. Hunter takes out both members of the corporation and he gets in a facebuster knee smash to Kenny Boy. Things break down again, but the corporate commissioner makes his presence felt when he pulls down the top rope. This causes X-Pac to tumble to the outside. Sean throws a chair to Shamrock as boss man holds Helmsley, but just before Ken swings, Billy Gunn gets in the ring and he tells Shamrock that he wants to be the one that hits Triple H. To the surprise of approximately three people, Billy instead whacks Shamrock right between the eyes with the weapon and a reunited DX take out the corporation. Sean's left absolutely seething on the outside as DX celebrate in the ring. As telegraphed as this all was, you can't argue with the crowd reaction, they absolutely loved it. D-Generation X are back in full force and that can only mean trouble for Shawn Michaels and the corporation. We end this week's show with Rock and The Undertaker taking on Austin and Mankind on Raw. On Nitro we have a Bret Hart promo and that Goldberg vs Bigelow match. The hitman makes his way to the ring and he puts an arm around Mean Gene. Mean Gene tells his excellency not to get too friendly. Bret heard about the upcoming Jan vs DDP match at the pay per view and Bret says Dallas has a Jan problem at Starcade. Get it? Jan problem? Bret says the DDP could have faced the hitman but Dallas took the easy way out. But more importantly, Bret Hart's US champion once again and the US belt represents courage and perseverance. The hitman's the best there is, the best there was and the best there ever will be, the greatest of all time. Even Smokey the Cat got excited for Bret's big title victory. When Smokey my cat ran up and jumped in my arms 
because he's the only fan I got and he was so happy. Brett tells DDP to stay out of his way and if Paige wants to fight Brett again, the hitman will excellently execute Dallas. Brett may have a bad knee, he may have a pulled groin, but Brett isn't ready for the glue factory just yet. WCW is being put on notice once again and the greatest of all times just getting started. A good promo here from Brett, but unfortunately that injury is going to keep him out of the ring for a while. His next televised match happens in February 1999, so Bret Hart's going to miss Starcade this year. The main event was then scheduled to take place, but you guessed it, it doesn't happen. Bam Bam Bigelow makes his entrance, but Kevin Nash runs down and a brawl breaks out. Goldberg then hits the ring too and security run in to break up all three men. So once again viewers get robbed with another Nitro bait and switch. To be fair, Nash did say the match wasn't going to happen, but he also said it was going to be a three way match instead. Either way, I was looking forward to seeing Bam Bam wrestle again and that didn't happen, so it's another blunder from WCW in my opinion. On Raw, Steve Austin finds Mankind's bag in his locker room. Inside, there's a cold beer and a note. The note says, Steve, have a cold one on me, I'm heading for the Rocky, Mankind. Undertaker and Rock make their entrance. Mick Foley then heads into the ring and the match gets underway with no sign of Steve Austin anywhere. Mankind's all alone and things aren't going too well when Foley takes a big boot, but the glass shatters, the crowd pops and Austin appears at the entranceway. Undertaker goes after Austin, but The Rock wants a piece of the rattlesnake first. This allows Foley to go after The Undertaker and all four men fight on the ramp and around the ring. Mankind gets hit with a steel chair while holding onto the ring steps as Rock and Austin fight at the opposite ring steps across the way. Austin then gets his hands on The Undertaker and the dead man takes a few rights, but the guys change it up again and it goes back to Rock and Austin fighting it out. When the match finally gets in the ring, it's Mankind taking a choke slam. Rock then chokes Mankind from the outside, Mick returns the favor, but the damage has been done it seems and The Undertaker is able to hit a big leg drop before tagging out. The corporate champ lays in a few right hands and Austin's complaining that the official does more harm than good. Austin's itching to get in the ring, but the heels use this to their advantage. Tag Team Wrestling 101. Rock hits Mankind with a low blow, Taker comes back in to lay in a few knee strikes. Mankind finally puts the dead man down with a swinging neckbreaker, but he doesn't have enough to tag out. Rock then gets in there once again and we see the corporate elbow. Rock then encounters a double arm DDT attempt with a back body drop and Austin's forced to get in the ring when Mankind gets taken out with a rock bottom. Austin and Undertaker throw down as the crowd goes nuts and the two end up on the outside. Ken Shamrock and the boss man then show up to attack Mankind and we have yet another DQ finish. Mankind gets handcuffed to the top rope so he's pretty much done for. Austin and Undertaker continue to fight on the outside and into the audience. Austin's eventually able to choke Undertaker out with some cord but the dead man hits the rattlesnake with the ring bell and a steel chair, so Austin's out cold. Undertaker then brings Austin up the ramp where druids are waiting to put Austin on the giant Undertaker symbol. Undertaker said he was going to sacrifice Stone Cold and he's going to do it right now on Raw it seems. Austin gets dropped to the symbol and it slowly begins to rise up from the ramp. Austin said on his old podcast that he had a lot of nerves when doing this bit due to the small platform he had to stand on. But what a visual, just look at that and what a way to end Raw. The Undertaker says he's taken Austin's mind, his body and his soul. The only thing left is to bury Austin alive. No surprises here then, Raw wins another episode of Reliving the War. The bait and switches at the end of Nitro used to be disappointing, but now they're becoming really annoying. The Hall vs Steiner match getting cut short was a kick in the balls too. Raw, on the other hand, left viewers wanting more with a good main event coupled with Austin getting put on Taker's symbol. And while all in all it wasn't an excellent episode of Raw, it was still better than WCW's offerings. Raw now has 80 points on the board, WCW has 65 and we've got 18 ties. In the TV ratings, Raw wins with a 5.1, Nitro scored another 4.2. Next up, it's WWF Rock Bottom in your house. The Rock defends his WWF Championship against Mankind, while Steve Austin faces The Undertaker in a Buried Alive match. Come over this Sunday and we'll check out the final WWF pay-per-view of 1998. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and all that good stuff. And if you want to see early episodes and other videos that don't get uploaded to YouTube, head over to the Wrestling Bios Patreon page. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all this Sunday for Rock Bottom.